Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about something that we do every single season. And whether you hunt public land or you hunt private land, it's something that you should consider doing as well. And that's a post-season analysis or a post-season review of your habitat improvements and your hunting season. As we go further and further into our hunting career, we wanna be taking steps forward instead of steps backwards. And one way to ensure that we are continuing to improve is by looking at the performance of this hunting season compared to those in the past. And because most of the videos on this channel are geared towards the habitat improvements and hunting strategies on my parcel in Southwest Michigan, I felt that sharing the review of this property this past season was only fair since you guys are watching these videos for my advice. Now before we dive right into the review and talk about what was unsuccessful and what was successful about this past season, I did want to kind of give you guys a little bit of a background on this property. My wife and I were lucky enough to purchase this property in the fall of 2018 and we closed on this house around Halloween of 2018. So smack dab in the middle of the hunting season, right in the middle of the rut. And that season I had a pretty interesting choice to make. It was either do I hunt this property hard or do I kind of just let the property sit. I chose to let it sit for the majority of the season. I was able to hunt the property twice, more observation sits, just to kind of see how the deer were utilizing the property. And that second time I sat, I did throw out a few trail cameras. That way I can get a better understanding as to what I was working with in regards to the local deer herd. After the end of the 2018 season, I think I waited until the end of January, early February to pull those cameras down. And I was very excited to see what this area had to offer in terms of local bucks. On paper, this property has a lot of potential, so I was very excited to see what was on these cards. And as I went through each SD card, I was more and more disappointed. There wasn't a single two and a half year old buck on camera on this property from mid-November until late January, early February. And there really wasn't a whole lot of deer movement in general. And after going through the cards, I, I was uh, shocked to say the least, uh, mainly because of how much potential this property had and all the deer sign that we saw during the visit before we purchased the house. So to see hardly any deer on the cameras, it, when, and the cameras were in great locations, and to, to not see any two-year-old bucks, very few bucks in general, was very surprising. So I knew that I had my work cut out for me and I, I needed to start my improvements right away. So that following spring, the 2019 habitat season, I knew that I had to focus on a few things. I knew that I needed to build a deer herd. And once the deer herd was here, I could not spook them out of here. So my main focus for 2019 was putting in food plots and very secure access. Now I had a lot more projects on my list that I knew that I needed to accomplish to get this property to where it needed to be. But keep in mind, I'm doing all of these improvements by myself when I have time. And doing 36 acres worth of habitat improvements in a single season is not realistic. So again, I made a list of the improvements that I knew were a priority in order to lay the foundation for this property. And that was food and very secure perimeter access. One other improvement that I really wanted to make sure I incorporated that season, and I did, was a very secure bedding location in the dead center of my property. That would give the deer a place to hide when the pressure started to increase from the neighboring properties. Fast forward to the 2019 hunting season, I'll give you guys a quick recap of that. It was good, but not great. Before the season starts, we kind of schedule out where we're gonna hunt and when, and the weekends that we had blocked off for this property ended up being terrible weather weekends. It was either 30 mile an hour winds or we had a torrential downpour the day before. And that's actually how I found out how about a quarter of this property, if you get about four inches of rain in a day, will flood and it'll stay flooded for about two days. And unfortunately, a lot of the food plots and bedding locations that are on this property were about six inches underwater. So deer are just not gonna hang around it in, the, in that situation. They were pushed off, but once the water subsided, they did come back. And we were able to hunt this property a few times during the 2019 season with some good hunting weather. And we did see quite a few deer. Uh, we saw uh, quite a few younger bucks and we saw one two and a half year old buck. Uh, we did not take a deer off the property in 2019 but the property was taking steps in the right direction. Although we didn't harvest a deer, we were building the deer numbers, we were building the buck numbers, and we did have a two and a half year old buck using the property pretty consistently. But still this property wasn't there yet. We knew we had a lot of work to do. So if I were to grade the 2019 season, I would probably give it a C or a C minus. And that kind of brings us into the 2020 habitat season. But along with building upon what I already had, during the 2020 habitat season, I really wanted to try to focus on cover on the north half of my property, along with creating a deer trail system that wrapped around the southern half of my property. 
And so that's exactly what I did. Uh, most of the 2020 habitat season uh, was spent either traditionally felling trees or hinge cutting trees. And then I would go in and manicure trails within the cuttings, create openings. So not only would the deer feel comfortable staying on my property, but they'd also feel comfortable moving during daylight. Then again, the other main focus of this past off season was to create a trail system that kind of wrapped around the southern part of my property. And this wasn't for hunter access, this was for deer use. I really worked hard to make sure that these deer had a very safe way to get all the way around my property. I wanted to give them a very easy way to get from point A to point B and start conditioning them to use these trails that are moving right past my stands. So again, that was the main focus of the 2020 habitat season, not only to maintain and build upon what I had already created, but I wanted to create more cover and connect more of the improvements on my property, making the deer movement much more consistent. And I know that was a very long explanation, but I, I do feel like you need to know where a property started so you can either appreciate or criticize where it is right now. And that brings us to this past hunting season and my review or analysis of the past hunting season. Whew, it's cold. I, my hands are probably going to stay in the pocket for the rest of the video. It, it's a little chilly. And whenever you do any sort of a review or an evaluation, you want to look at what was unsuccessful along with what was successful. And that's what we're going to do here. So was this past season successful or was this past season unsuccessful as it relates to my hunting goals? Um, I would say it was both. It was both unsuccessful and it was also successful at the same time. And we'll kind of get into why. We'll start out with why it was not successful and then we'll end with why the season was a success. So the very easy explanation as to why the hunting season on this particular property was not successful was because I did not shoot the buck that I wanted to shoot. We had a, a very nice deer coming through this property during the summer. He'd come through uh, every few weeks and then he kind of disappeared around mid-September. I don't have very much history with this property or with this deer, so I can't tell you how old he is, but if I had to guess, I'd say he was in that three and a half year old age range. And since we've owned this property, that was one of the nicest deer that's been consistently using this property. So I made the decision before the season started and I talked to our hunting group that that was the deer that we were after. Unfortunately, his daylight movement turned into nocturnal movement right around the uh, start of the season. After the bachelor group that he was hanging out in broke up, I'm pretty sure he went to go live on my neighbor's property about 400 yards away. And he would come through this property a few times a week, but it would always be about a half hour after shooting light was over. And so what he was most likely doing was he was hanging up in the uh, neighbor's woods, waiting until dark, crossing a cow pasture, and then he'd come into our property. And he'd always come into the same spot every single time. I have a scrape and a camera there. It's a really good location, but unfortunately he would come in about a half hour after shooting light was over, and then he would leave and go back to his bed well before it got light in the morning. And so again, we, we, we never saw that deer during daylight during the season. We have him on trail cameras multiple times at night. We actually have him on camera a few days after the gun opener, so there's actually a good chance he probably made it through the season. A lot of times here in Michigan, if a deer can make it past November 15 or November 16, there, there's, a, there's a pretty decent chance that he's gonna survive until next season. So we did get a picture of this deer on November 16th at night. So there's a pretty good chance he's still alive and we'll have a crack at him next year. But if he did survive and we do want to crack at him next year, we have to figure out why he's choosing to live on the neighbor's property and not our property. And there's a few reasons why. One reason could be that this property just currently isn't set up to hold a deer of his age class, meaning that it's most likely not offering enough secure bedding cover. And that can be fixed. You need to create more secure bedding cover and more secure connecting cover so these deer can get from their bed to the food without ever feeling exposed. Another possibility as to why this particular property is a part of that buck's home range, but not the buck's core area, is just the fact that he doesn't live here. That deer is at least three years old, and we've only owned this property for two and a half seasons, so he could have had very negative experiences with hunters on this property before he owned it, and he found a spot with a lot less hunting pressure, or he perceives as less hunting pressure, and he's just not gonna take the chance. He's survived there for at least three years. He's gonna take his chances over there. And that's why keeping the hunting pressure on your property is so important, because once you push these deer out and if you do it on a consistent basis you're just going to be educating them for years to come and I'm not saying that's the case it's most likely that this property just isn't thick enough and it doesn't offer enough secure bedding cover to hold that deer along with the, all the other deer that are living on this property. So from a harvest standpoint this season was not successful because we did not take a deer on this property this season but from a big picture perspective this season was extremely successful and I'll kind of briefly talk about why. 
So in the beginning of this video, I kind of gave you a brief rundown of where we started on this property. Uh, pulled camera cards, barely saw any deer, barely saw any bucks. And last year we did see some young bucks. We had a, a bachelor group of year and a half old bucks and we, we had a handful of does um, that was kind of bringing us into this season. And holy smokes, I saw multiple bucks on almost every single sit. I don't think I ever went on a sit when I, and I didn't see deer. The group of three year and a half old bucks that we were able to save from the neighbors last year all ended up making it and they all turned into beautiful two and a half year old deer. And each one of those bucks moved consistently through daylight for the majority of the season. It wasn't really until gun season that they started to become more nocturnal and for the most part, they stayed on this property. Uh, I've, I've got a couple neighbors that if they saw those deer, they would not have hesitated to, to shoot them. Again, I was hunting a deer that I know now was living on the other side of a cattle pasture, but it was really fun to go back there and hunt just knowing that I had a really good chance of seeing one of these two-year-olds and watch them work through the property, watch them use the improvements that we put in the year before. That was always really fun to watch. And, and to see what this property can produce just after two years, uh, it's really rewarding. All the hard work that you put in during the off season, it, it's worth it. Now it does take time to build a herd and depending on what your harvest goals are, it does take time to get those bucks to that age class. And I, I know it's not easy, but you do have to be patient and kind of enjoy the ride. And also really enjoy when your property takes kind of a, a big step forward. And I feel like this year was, was one of those years for this property. We had so many two and a half year old bucks using this property and we had three of them that were using this property very consistently. And what's really exciting is I know for a fact that on top of the countless year and a half old bucks that survived, two of those two and a half year old bucks survived. I got a trail camera picture of each of those deer after the curtain closed in the 2020 season. So I know for a fact they made it. So going into the 2021 season, as long as nothing crazy happens, we're gonna have two three and a half year old deer and maybe a four and a half year old deer if that three and a half year old survived. So knowing all that, taking that all in, and looking at this more from a big picture standpoint, I would say that this past season was successful in taking a step in the right direction. But just because we're taking steps in the right direction does not mean that the work is over. The work is actually just beginning. Remember, we had a three and a half year old deer that did not feel comfortable moving on our property this year. So I do not want that to happen to the two year olds that survived this past season. I want them to stay on this property, giving us hunting opportunities next season. So at the end of my review or the evaluation of my season on this particular property, if I were to give it a grade, I would give it a B minus. We are again moving in the right direction, but we are not anywhere near where we want to be and there's a lot of work to do. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I, I know it wasn't very exciting and we didn't really go over a whole lot from a habitat perspective or from a hunting strategy perspective. But if you guys are gonna be taking the time out of your day to watch videos on this channel and listening to my advice, then you have every right to know whether or not the improvements and the work being done on my own property is working or not. So hopefully this video kind of gives you guys an idea of that and I'll let you guys kind of decide for yourself. But if you guys do have any questions or comments, uh, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can and we will see you guys in the next video.